have. It's like, if they take anti-mage, then you can just win the lane against the Darkseer straight up. What do you actually do against that? So I really like the fact that they they banned away the anti-mage because they have the dark here and they're facing against the winter wyvern so they're not necessarily going to pick it for eternal envy um, the bloodseeker is banned out third second consecutive game by alliance something kind of interesting to note it's either a hero they don't feel comfortable or they know that a secret like to run is their backup to anti-mage but you still need a carry on alliance a lot of the good options are being banned out you go like the usual suspects route. You like, <laughs> I was about to say usual suspects, but tiny wisp. Uh, but they oh, okay, no, no, they do actually have room for it. Or shaker could run the off lane. They have one of the best counters to the wisp too. Yeah, already. Vacuum's a little dangerous against wisp and the any wisp combination and Lena. Will always just Laguna played the Wisp out of the fight immediately, but it wouldn't be a bad Poor pickup, ball. I would say. Bloop. Yes! Oh. Sorry, my bad. Let's go you, dude. Whenever, whenever I get to be Winter for a day, the Winter Merlini, I, I feel real good. Hello, you. <sighs> Alright, are you just not Are you just not going to high-five me right now? Oh, I didn't see your hand. I have bad peripheral vision. Wow. For obvious reasons. <laughs> Alright, so Radiant <laughs> have three more picks to go. You can't laugh at that. Uh, they're uh -huh. going to take the Dazzle. Alliance, they can go for the tiny if they want. Just set up perfectly for it. You you take the Winter Wyvern. Um, you need a support and a carry combination that isn't taken. I guess you could do the PA, but I really don't like PA laning against Darkseer. I think it's terrible. I don't know. Maybe What other self-sustained carries can go against Darkseer, though? Uh... It's not many. If you do, the problem is if you do tiny, you do tiny wisp mid, and you do Earthshaker off lane, at least you winter. Okay, that's a really good one. So they're not gonna. I mean, I'm, I, I tiny has got to be banned, right? No, you don't ban it. It's gonna the combos for the storm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's for the you... storm. But you do want another hero that works with the tiny. Maybe not overly reliant on the wisp. Sorry, the, I meant the wisp. Maybe not overly reliant on the wisp, but you do need another hero that... Because Storm Spirit is so mobile that you, when it comes to the mid-game team fights, wisp ah, can't just you're right. stick on the, the Storm Spirit, right? So you you got to still get some sort of combo. Um, I kind of want to see... I'm trying to think right now. I, I have to see the fourth pick and then I'll tell you. Yeah. If I can. Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight would. He wouldn't be bad. Oh. Uh, he's actually quite a strong laner versus Darkseer. Like, just because he has so much kill potential against him. But. Uh, I, like, as you said, we don't we don't really see the, the carry just yet from um, Team Secret. Even just the fourth pick, like what kind of control the Team Secret are going to be having with their supports. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to be doing some sort of AoE control, right, to run with the Darkseer, but what's left? Uh... Disruptor's still there, but I don't like Disruptor Dazzle together. That's too... There's not enough offensive power on the Dazzle to make sure that you are able to use the Disruptor aggressively. I'm trying to think right now. You could just do something normal like a Rubik because there's an Earthshaker and Winter Wyvern on the MVP team. Maybe it, you even it's... run that. I don't even know if I like that Lena as a core anymore, honestly. Yeah. What do they have? You could do SF. Oh, yeah. SF Radiant side does yeah. well against the Storm. Uh, okay, it is going to be a, a mid Lena. I don't See, know how I'm, much I like that. I'm not a fan of this either because I feel like it leaves your... It, this is always the problem when you have Rubik plus a defensive hero is that you never have enough damage, damage in the early yeah. game, right? So you have no pressure. And you got to steal, steal Curse or Fissure. Yeah, yeah. And you uh, So when it comes to pre-level 6, you have no pressure really at all. And then the Darkseer, like as an offlaner, he doesn't provide any early pressure. This is just going to be the Lena show through and through unless they pick up like a really aggressive carry, something like, you know, I, I don't think they'll go for something like it, but like Slardar, you know, that, that kind of like carry that gets in there super early. Oh, it's, it's just be... going to be a Lena show through and through. Like she's going to be the only tempo controller that Secret have. Yeah, I think uh, I'm trying to think right now. You see Fire, by the way, they run some like interesting strategy where they do like Slardar offlane. 
I like that a lot. I think that has potential. I think Zlardar has a, as a hero has potential. He's just like missing that little bit of oomph. But Alliance, uh, the Bristle would have been really nice actually. You need something kind of tanky that is also mobile that can keep up with the storm. I don't know. Uh, preferably a disable. Uh, PA or CK are both okay. I would have said Sven, but I think he kind of gets hurt actually by the Earthshaker. And you need, you also need high ground eventually. Yeah. So CK kind of fits that bill. CK is such a, I don't want to say bad hero, but you do need a hero that can also do Roshan. PA kind of fits that bill. You do something really weird and pick like Dro. I, they just do not have enough support to keep the Darkseer from six. So, yeah. I, so I going back to your PA, I'm just like, I can't see the PA because Winter Wyvern will never be able to push the Darkseer enough out of lane. So you're going to have level 3 Darkseer with level 2 Ion Shell burning through all of that. Okay, so this they is gonna go be the back tiny. for the tiny. Alright, I think I'm okay with this because uh, I just kind of forgot about it for a second, but it was my initial call and the reason for it is because... With the lineup that you already have, you need something to go high ground, and you need a DPS dealer physical. That's why I was kind of okay with the PA, because it kind of fulfills your Roshan requirement, yeah. too. It's like pick two out of three, you do Roshan and go high ground, and you need a physical damage dealer. But PA, I guess PA is just kind of garbage right now. <laughs> if you swapped it out here, if you saw, in your opinion, Blitz, you're looking at this lineup, if you saw Wiss Bristle instead of Wiss Tiny, would you do you think that Alliance would have a stronger or weaker draft than they have now? I would like the bristle. You would you would prefer the bristle, so you think it was the correct ban by Team Secret to take out the bristle back rather than the tiny? Yeah, because I think the bristle uh, allows you to tank up against every single one of those non-damage dealing heroes. Yeah, and then also you can do Roshan, like it fulfills a lot. Ooh, <laughs> Spectre. Okay, Claire Boyce was talking to me about Spectre earlier, um, and he got me kind of excited for Spectre just because. He was talking about how like kills in the current meta are so important, and Spectre can always be a part of kills um, through that ultimate. And this allows the Spectre to be able to kind of jump ahead where many other carries, like you're either a farming carry or you're an active, aggressive carry. Um, certain heroes like Gyrocopter just happen to be both. Spectre, he said in the North American scene, it's been picked up quite a bit, and it's had some pretty good success. Blitz, do you think the Spectre has more relevance in this meta than she's been given? And do you think this is the right pickup for Secret? Uh, you know what was really weird? And I'm not even BSing here. I thought that Alliance would take it for a second. I had this, like, odd feeling uh -huh. that Alliance were actually going to grab it. It's, uh, it's actually Secret that take it. I don't know why. I just had some kind of odd... I, I kind of feel like there's not a garbage hero. But yeah. at the same time, it, it has so many flaws. Just because, uh, look at Alliance's lineup. It's so aggressive. It's actually so aggressive. And I and I think the correct way to play around Spectre is actually to have an equally aggressive lineup. Yes. So you can actually use her to participate in fights. Like, in the past, the way that teams would utilize her is always as the ultra late game carry. Mm -hmm. Like, you get a Radiance and then you can win the game. But I think that in professional Dota anyways, you just can't survive that long. Yeah. There's, there's no lineup that allows you to be defensive enough to be able to push the game 40, you know, 35 minutes where yeah. Spectre finally becomes a part of your team fight. So I, I agree with you. I think you, I like, I really like the phase boots, like, earn build that we used to see on Spectres that allowed her to be super aggressive um, as soon as she had her ultimate. And the team would just, the uh, your, your team would just go out as a four-man crew and search for fights and knowing that your Spectre always had your back. Yeah, you know, I have uh, my alt account as 7k with just carry. I ran spec like <laughs> 10 times in a row, and I won like Tranquil's drums in the diffusal. Ran at people. Uh-huh. Did, like... did you go Manta with the diffusal? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I like that build as well. I was like 10 and like 1 with it or something like that. Wow. It, was, it wasn't bad. I mean, that's uncoordinated oh. pubs, though. Yeah, that's, uh... the, that's the huge difference here. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think in this game, you pretty much have to get Radiance at some point. Mm-hmm. It would help so much against the Earthshaker. The Whisk gets destroyed by it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's pretty much just... Spec games are always so coin flippy. It's like, do you have Radiance at a 
decent enough time, yes, you win the game. <laughs> like, do you not have yeah. a radiance before your team just demolished? You lost the game. Rinse and repeat. All right, so all right, uh, misery's dead. Uh, oh, oh yeah, he's he's. He did the I double ion shell like spam out in lane and just tried to do as much damage as possible. But th this is again goes back to um, the amount of support that we're putting in the defensive lane now, really uh, putting a lot more pressure on shutting down those off laners. Like, a, a Darkseer can do that double Ion Shell and run with the creep wave against the carry and the support, but he can't do it against three heroes. And and that extra hero really makes a big difference with how you play the Darkseer in the early game. I also think he just didn't anticipate dying that quickly. Yeah. Like, that was a bit of a surprise for him. He's just like, oh, I'm dead. Uh, and now this is going to help load out because the Wiz is just going to rotate and... This is something you anticipate because you're going to leave the storm up top just because he can remnant down the ion shelled creep waves. He's going to go for the 202 build for, for here. Spectre, uh, real quickly, may I, why why do you go tranquil boots? Um I mean, on your I think Spectre? AUI suggested it as a troll and I just liked it. <laughs> okay. You have like unbelievable move speed. You can farm the jungle. Oh. Nobody runs away and Yeah, we okay. have Okay. That's, I mean, the landing phase has just already gone so well for Alliance. Like, oh, yeah. You don't have to add anything else from this. Like, the, the Wisp is getting a lot as a result of this. Like, getting a decent level. The Tiny has now had a oh, fairly significant puppy. advantage. Oh, never mind. Sorry. I got I got a little overexcited. I thought they were going to be able to, like, oh, they're sandwiching the Dazzle, but they don't have mana on yeah. the on the Tiny, so. Oh, Ake's dead. Yeah. yeah, they hit the... He doesn't have a tether, so... He's Dragon got the level slave. 3, yep. There he goes. A nice job by Puppy. Him denying that rune is actually what allowed them to be kill in the first place. Oh, for sure. Just good play overall. You still keep up uh, rune control as much as you can. Secret, since, like, even their last lineup, they've had a pretty big emphasis on it in this mid lane. They're going to try to get... Uh, Give it a go on Weeha. He's going to get tossed back into the creep wave. Yeah, right into the Wisp's waiting arms. And now, last couple of right clicks. We'll be able to get it uphill. Oh, no miss. All right, you've, if you're Weeha, you just have to be more concerned about this lane because you don't pay attention, and then all of a sudden, the damage is there. They run you down really quickly. Mm -hmm. He even hit consecutive stuns, which is really unlikely. So he has to use that as a signal like, oh, I almost lived? No, you have to use that as a, everything went right and I still died. My nuts. That melee creep hadn't got off the auto attack. It might have just actually chased my nuts to his death. But middle lane, they're gonna catch Weeha once again. Light strike array goes down, but he still dies in the end. All right, he's really not Tilty. respecting this lane. Yeah. This is like, I think it was like, did, was it you that casted that game with me where Swindle Melons had to play Dragon Knight against the uh, some Chinese team? They picked like Wist Tiny and killed him like eight times in a row. Yes. That was like, this is what this is starting to remind me of. Mm -hmm. Three deaths in three minutes. Uh, it, it is a difficult lane, but at some point you kind of have to like play really defensively and just go for stacks mm -hmm. and accept the fact that it's a rough lane. Yeah, because you're not going to get any um, support from the four or five position on Team Secret. Ru like uh, Rubik uh, gets into the lane, like what's he going to do? He's not actually going to give you the kill power. He'll set up the Light Strike Array, but as you said, we has already landed multiple Light Strike Arrays and it hasn't changed the lane all that much. So. And this is, again, one of the big downsides of running a, a very passive, defensive offlaner as well as supports. Um, Puppy is helping out the top lane quite a bit, though. Uh, the Darkseer is getting a lot done in this top lane. It's actually putting a lot of pressure on both the Winter Wyvern and the Storm, actually. Storm has been forced to uh, burn through a lot of his regen earlier, but now he's got a fresh set of tangos as well as a bottle with the Courier making its rounds up to the top lane. And this is not what you want to see as a spec. He's going to go for the urn build that we talked about, and I advocate mm -hmm. for this as well because he is going to have to help his team participate. Yeah. Uh, you can't just like passively farm up the Radiance and expect not to be pressured by a Wisp Tiny Storm Spirit. Uh, uh, sorry, just, just real quick. I want to get this out there. Uh, by the way, guys, the, the best of three scores are bugged right now, um, which is why there was a tick on the last game, and I believe this is why we have a tick on this game, but for the wrong side. Um, Secret did it. No. <laughs> Secret did not do it. Alliance are currently up 1-0. Ignore what the scores. All right, so... If anybody says anything in Twitch, just yell at them. Just just yell them down. Yeah, dude, that'll be effective. Yeah. I'm sure they'll listen just to you. Just spam. 
Just do it. I'm sure the, the moderators don't mind, because we don't have moderators. Alright, so this mid lane, we have Zai. Uh, he's finally starting to play really defensively, playing the range out. This is what he had to go from the do from the get-go. Again, Weeha lands the stun, and this time, Eternal Envy's here. He's level 6. They should be able to mop up this kill on Loda. Yeah, at the same time, Misery's going to go down in the top lane, so... They do get a, a trade-off, at the very least. They got Misery. I thought with that Spectre Ultimate, I was just like, oh, middle, top, middle, top. They got aggressive in the top lane, but it didn't work out for them. Still, the, the kill on Tiny is huge, for sure. So which one did you end up watching? I ended up watching the top one. Okay, I, I watched the mid one. That's perfect. Yeah. So what happened in mid is they went for way too over-aggressive dive. Like, Weehaw keeps getting the double stun off on them. The crazy thing is he's died three times still, but uh, the spec coming in is huge. Because he needs to make rotations like that. And he's got two earn charges now. That's really going to help his laning phase against Bulldog. Because now he's got kill potential in the lane too. Really well played by Jackie Mao. Uh, I think uh, Eternal Envy is actually going for the Medallion build. Because he's got another uh, Sage's Mask. Oh, the Stormtrooper just picked up his level 6. And he's going to go for a quick kill on the Spectre. A little bit more damage. And he'll get it. Shellgrave actually saves him. Jackie's out. Nicely played, and because he was a part of a kill earlier, he's got those two different urn charges, so he can actually stay in lane and continue to farm. Will not be pushed back by the Storm Spirit. You sure he's not just going for Nikola? Oh, you're right, you're right, right. I was like, yeah. why would he go for Medallion? In I, I've seen Medallion builds the one. Yeah, but he is a Dazzle. Yeah. I just got a little excited. I just didn't want to. I got a little excited. I didn't want to, like. Yeah, there, I mean, there's the Slipper of Agility. I, I didn't want to, like. Tamper your mood or anything like that, but I was like, what? That's the ultra aggressive build up. It's like the, I'm gonna find pickoffs all day. Clearing through stacks, Loda and Ake. Having a blast oh, they're in the gonna... jungle, but they're gonna get S4! Ooh. Everything is turned around. It really has. Three to five, all of a sudden. Uh, Alliance, who are up almost a thousand gold by minute four. And up by a decent amount of experience as well, things have shifted quite dramatically in Team Secret's favor now. They just needed... I mean, they had the ward vision mid too, right? Or they just got it down, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they needed that ward. Uh, Pylai Dai was ready with the lift. They got a kill. He's about to hit level 6 on top of that. Weeha has made a very nice recovery for himself. Not the start that he wants, but still. He's not even behind in net worth. Like... Fifth in net, fourth in net worth, and uh, second highest on his team. And luckily for him, the Spectre is now the highest on his team. Everything is going pretty well for them now. Pace of this game is pretty good. And the Spectre is such a high level. I, th I think it's so important to um, have the Spectre get those early levels too. It's not because of the ultimate, but just because you can have the maxed out um, Dagger and Desolate and start building into the Dispersion. The dispersion is necessary, obviously, for your mid game once you really start tanking up. But the early damage all comes from your um, desolate damage, and a little bit of the spectral dagger as well. I mean, this is such a this is this is what we were talking about though, with the Earthshaker being a weak hero. Yeah, exactly. He's he's left alone against the specter, and he can't abuse it. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest reasons why this game um, has kind of started to go the way that we're seeing with like having such a high net worth. Because if you had a Darkseer down there, for example, you fly on shell pressure him out of the lane like, every thirty seconds. But with an Earthshaker here, the one Fissure doesn't really scare the spec out of the lane. He's got a wand. Uh, he's got that urn. There, there's the ring of the killer. Okay, now you just look like <laughs> such an idiot. I mean, the moment you suggested it, I was just like, oh yeah, ring of a killer. That's an item too, I guess. Like, how do you see that? How do you see that Sobe mask? And I don't know what kind of bracket you're on. That was some like Toby level theory crafting. <laughs> Let's please. <laughs> out of all, the, out of all the the hurtful things you've said in the past, none of them struck deep like that one did. Jesus, you got down. You gotta just go for the people's elbow, man. All right, Loda's just gonna run into a bunch of heroes and die. Yeah, he is. They're gonna pop the Spectre Ultimate just to make sure that Loda does in fact die. Ake goes for the relocate, but Ake has now died too. Only saves himself. Eh, no, I don't think, I don't think so. Oh, he can just tether away. Yeah, they've got uh, a tether away. They've got smoke up, and that they may turn this one. They've got the Winter's Curse. They don't have level six. In fact, the buyback surprise. Oh, they oh a double kill for Loda, and now Pilot is going to be run down as well. Triple kill for Loda, and are they going to get more? S4 tried to go on a puppy, but didn't have enough.
fry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the freest kill. And, and, and there's Blitzdona. And now Ake's dead, too. Dude, it was so... The, oh, man. Loda with the... Uh, what a godlike player, honestly. That was so... I mean, Alliance set that up beautifully. They waited they had, for the last second. Yeah, they had the smoke up and everything. Because my nuts was sitting there. They had the smoke and everyone just kind of sitting there. And I was like, oh, they're going to actually fight around this one. But the buyback was really... Oh, that's hilarious. Pulled the clinch in. <laughs> you never see that. <laughs> so surprising. <laughs> I mean, what do you do about that? It's like, you, know, what, you hear the buyback sound, but he's already there. Yeah, that was actually... There's no way they can disengage. Like, once yeah. they were sitting there... He waited for the, like the last possible second too. Oh, you're so oh. ownage, Loda. I hope there's a <laughs> highlight clip of that. They deserve it. I mean, I, that was all on Alliance, though. They they set that up beautifully. Oh, that was that was so smart. I enjoyed that greatly, because you just don't see stuff like that often. It, yeah. How entertaining. Aren't you glad you came in the cast today, Blitz? No, I'm dying. <laughs> I might actually have to cancel. Or, like I thought I would be okay, you know. Yeah. But judging by today, like this makes me even more concerned about tomorrow. Yeah. All right, that's okay. I'll cast it with Durkin. and we'll get someone else to do D2CL. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die. I've got well, Ebola. I mean. <laughs> I know you're doing it on perp, by the way. What? I know you are. Just getting sick? Just getting as, no, getting as many sympathy threads out of Reddit as possible. <laughs> oh, I'm retiring after TI6. You're oh, the person that backed me up oh, on that. I don't, I don't like my casting, guys. Oh, I'm really sick. Now it's, oh, I can do sick cast more. Man, if I had OD Pixel, who's actually grateful <laughs> for his position in the community, we really wouldn't be having this conversation right now. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so fight around middle lane. It's gonna occur. Team Secret looking for uh, just taking away this tier one tower. Alliance aren't gonna fight over it. I thought they were for a second, but they're just gonna splinter blast spam a little bit and take a tier one at bottom and a trade off. It seems, but Team Secret actually stop pushing middle. You can't, not against Winter Wyvern here. Yeah. You get you get your Lena's Winter's Curse. She gets blown up. Or even like your Dazzle gets caught in it, the game just ends. Actually, this Dazzle pick is pretty big though, considering how much burst damage Alliance have. And I've talked about it in the past, but it requires so much for the Storm to be able to have that initial, uh, that initial like start. Yeah. I'm rewatching that fight again on the stream. It just happened. Chat's going insane. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> what a classic. Uh, just amazing. I'd highlight it, but I can't do it in the middle of the cast. I mean, it was just funny. Like, uh, I don't even mind being super wrong there. That was that was the best possible scenario for all parties involved. It was, except Team Secret. Uh, but the, that really did change a lot of the game, though, because the Lena was actually like second in net worth after yeah. they were able to get the kill on the Tiny. But that has completely changed. Now the Tiny is at the top. They got a lot of map control out of it. He's almost got a full Aghanim Scepter. And once he has something like a BKB, Loda is going to be a monster. S4 is actually going to go on to Jack here. They have the relocate, but he's already jumped himself away. He jumped up to uh, to top where the relocate came oh, from. Oh, he actually... So they're going to go back and try and kill uh, Ake. A... They Most should be able to. Well. Yeah, and, and they bring Loda back, so they might be able to get Loda as well. Back in, back in. Light Strike Array on both, and they get two kills. It's a twofer for Team Secret. Beautiful play by Eternal Envy. Okay, they sort of, they reverse baited them time around. Yeah. And now the spec has he still doesn't really quite have the amount of gold that he wants, but in fifty three hundred net worth at this point in the game, uh, hasn't has only died once after that really wonky. Uh oh, my nuts gonna be caught here. Fly, fly away, a little birdie. It's over the cliff and he's out. Uh, Pilot Eye steals the splinter plus. Not a bad ability whatsoever. Now, if he could get the curse off, that would be. That would just be crazy. But the cores from are playing really well, and Puppy is always in position with the Grave. That's something I really want to highlight. The fact that Puppy has been there every single time with the Grave. 1-0-1 uh, zero and one is the score, but it doesn't really belie what he's been able to do this game. No. <laughs> so S4 is looking to finish up his Bloodstone in the next few minutes. Oh, he found himself a haste rune. Would you look at that? No longer is good. He single-handedly got that rune nerfed. True. And How he's a storm spirit. It like barely lasts now. 
you know how long it is? It's like three seconds or something. I think it's twenty-five. Okay, something incredibly short. I was gonna say twenty-five, but does I wanted Bulldog to. Bulldog have his blink now, though. You to guess first. Oh, he does. I'm gonna show it? Probably not. I don't think you should. No. You. I mean, there's so many potentials for so so much potential for a big play. Counter initiation on the Lena. Once she has her Yule Scepter, is gonna be the biggest. Yeah. My nuts is gonna ping it out too. He sees it. Rotation around. They're gonna go for uh, four man smoke and rotate around or something. Oh, five man smoke. Or maybe no smoke at all. They're gonna see everybody from Secret right now with this board. This is pretty productive. Yeah. Secret or Alliance are gonna see all of them. Uh, S4 has been playing greedy this entire time. Like, he once had 300 HP and 300 mana. I, I actually think if Jackie just like TPs on him with like the Ion Shell, he probably could have just killed him at that point potentially. But uh, he's already up to 2k gold. This is gonna be a pretty fast Radiance. Emerald Bulldog, he reveals the blink now on a Jackie, but that wasn't really... Is that the play? Uh, I, I think maybe he thought he was going to be able to get in range oh, for the combo stun. Highlight guy is dead. Yeah, that's not even a question. Hake just leaves uh, Loda. Just don't even waste your time. I think that was the right decision. Just splitting the XP between two people. Yeah. And they, this still allows them to be able to go for the fight at top lane. They still have the blink. Echo Slam ready to go. Echo Slam laid out. Enchant Totem. Fisher blocked. Now the combo from Loda will finish off Eternal Envy. He got away from that blink dagger once, but stuck around and got burned a second time. I think that that was a weird play. Maybe he thought that he would be there sooner. Because he knows that they were just at top. Yep. He assumed that they had rotated, but still, that was still kind of an unsafe play to make. I actually think it was just maybe a miscommunication. I don't want to call out anybody in because that that was just a weird play that I'm not used to him making. Mm -hmm. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. I think is the better thing to do. Sure. I don't want to get I don't want to get yelled at. I would like to return a levy. It's a co-caster, so I can replace <laughs> your ass. A. Agonim's gonna be the next pickup for Weeha. Huh? All right, so S4 has just been playing the style of Dota that I love to see Storms do. He's just playing on the enemy side of the jungle. They're just getting a lot of gold out of this. It's another haste rune. Uh, this is what you want <laughs> out of your Storm, though, is that yeah. he, he's going to be playing as a core, but he's not going to be taking farm like a core. He's going to be on the other side of the map, setting up for these individual pickoffs, just looking out for these one or two hero kills. Now everybody from Secret has rotated to this top side. They want to try to create some pressure for Envy to look for a pickoff. I think they know. Uh, they didn't see the smoke directly, but okay, maybe they didn't. There, you're going to stick around. Uh, Ake is sitting way back on the side here, ready to relocate Loda back, but a Spectre Ultimate is going to reveal him. Now Ake in a bit of a pickle. He's got to relocate, try and catch up, but the Old Scepter is going to be able to stop it. The relocate doesn't save Loda. And now Ake, okay, we'll see if he actually escapes. He should be able to. He's got Admiral Bulldog to not, jump to. Not again. Time. It's not going to happen again. There's no way. <laughs> they do have a buyback, but uh, this time around. Oh, he just had the blink back? Yeah. I mean, once they get punished once by that buyback play, they're never going to play so aggressively on the Wisp <laughs> relocate back again. So now they're always going to give room for Ake to just tether away. That was... Oh, that was so funny the first time around. I'm still laughing at it. Man, Dota's just the best game. Alright, they're probably going to put a lot of pressure on this top tower, and Eternal Envy just gets an additional 400 gold, and more importantly than that, it's the space that he's been given as a result of all of this. Uh, S4 has the blood zone now, and this is probably around the timing that Alliance wants to use to be able to get aggressive on the map. Do they have a medallion? No. Trying to run down Weha right now. They caught him with a Fisher earlier, stopping his TP. Uh, he's got a Fisher again. He's got to be careful. He's going to go for the kill on Ake real quickly. I think he knows he's going to die otherwise, so he just tries to man up, go for the Whisk kill. It doesn't actually happen. And they are uh, willing to commit the Echo Slam for that kill. Meanwhile, S4 has his Bloodstone. To buy the recipe and he'll be good. That was really close. They actually almost had that. Like, oh. they... He he made the right decision there for sure. As for God of the Runes, fine. No. He really does get an unbelievable luck. Alright, so they're going to take this top tower down. The tiny still topping the charts, but you expect that again out of the Spectre because he's this ever-looming threat, you know? 
There he is. I was about to say, he was going to find Puppy eventually. The free pick off there and keeps his regen intact. So they take that tier one tower at the top lane. They're gonna and they're now going to quickly one. take, uh, or try to take that tier one, but they relocate back. They'll just continue to farm. Uh, Loda, do, do you just go straight for the AC now? Yes. Okay, there, there is no chance that Blink Dagger would be valuable. Oh, Storm is just doing a bunch of micro jumps trying to escape. He should be fine. I think he's gone. Yeah, he's they had gone to blow more the than storm, enough. Or they had to blow the Spectre ulti for this, too. That's awkward. The reason, I think the reason why that S4 does that is because if he, if they eventually stop chasing him, uh, then he's like, okay, then I can turn around and actually have mana left over for this. Yeah. But now that it's gone, uh, you know, they keep chasing, so he just runs away. Loda, time to clear through some stacks. AC will be finished up rather quickly. He's already got the Hyper Stone enough for the plate mail now. The load is pretty out of control. Surprised he didn't sell his, sell his stout shield for the plate mail, but... How much value is there in hiding your item progression? We, we see it sometimes from people where they just like try and reveal the item all at once. I think like the refresher stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. Like I think, what was it, the play where like... Uh, is it AUI pretends to use the GA, like wasted, and then he's got a refresher ready, and then they overcommit? Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but stuff like that, you can hide. But when it comes to like, if you get an Orchid on Storm, of course you'll save the first one, and then you'll go for a pickoff. Same with like Blink Daggers on heroes like Axe and Parashaker or Batrider, you want to try to hide it. But then after that, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. I've seen like certain, um, like the Gyrocopter sometimes will hide um, whether he's not going, whether he's going Butterfly or MKB. Based on the fact that the enemy is going to try and counter it if he goes for the butterfly. But a uh, long jump. Pilai died. Does manage to get the telekinesis, but there's not nearly enough follow up. Not fast enough, anyway. Uh, Admiral Bulldog, instead of going for a four staff, which is pretty common for Shakers um, behind the Blink Dagger, he's going to go for the positioning of the Shadow Blade instead. Unless he wants the, the Glimmer Cape, I don't think that's. Quite as... I think he's really searching just for that positioning advantage that Shadow Blade offers you. Are they gonna get the pickoff here? Yeah, they get the Yule Scepter. Light Strike Array lands and S4 may be forced into a Bloodstone Suicide. No, he has enough to be able to jump himself out. He gets away. The Spectre Ultimate goes out, but it's a bit too late. He's already made so many jumps. Well played. No panic there. Yeah, he, he just always doing those micro jumps to make sure that if he makes the long jump and then the Spectre pops the ultimate, like boom, you're out of mana and Spectre's on top of you. But if you always do these smaller jumps and wait for the Spectre ultimate. I think it's more just that uh, he's clicking a distance that he can he knows he can cover for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll go with your interpretation too. <laughs> we can go that way. Maybe, I, are, you, are you saying it's it's a bad idea? It's a, It's a smart play. It's kind of irrelevant though, because you what? can't you can't get caught during the jump anyways. You've been fine, no matter what. No, but I'm saying once he like if he just zips away, right? He uses all his mana. Got no more zip. Yeah, I guess. The Inspector oh, pops his ultimate. They He's just on top killed. Of you. He just killed Pilot Die with the. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. Dead or shaker. Pop off. So now he's got the Shadow Blade. For the Roshan now. <laughs> I think so. Wow, Alliance are playing really well, though. Like, yeah. all across the board. S4 is really slippery. They're running this Tiny Wisp really well. They haven't really let this Spectre uh, snowball into anything, and now they get, they're they going to go for this Roshan. They've got a fully completed AC on Loda. You've got enough to back them up now. I think at some point you do get a BKB, just because Alina is still an issue, at least for the mid-game. She's going to go for the Aghanim, so then I guess it doesn't pay off as much. Right. There's still enough crowd control though on the other side of things though. Okay, pop the regen. Okay, they got this for sure. So an Aegis for Loda on top of the AC and Aghanim after that he has. The Radiance will be here for this next fight, I think, but it's just questionable whether or not it's going to do enough. Admiral Bulldog gets right onto Pile I Die with that Shadow Blade. Gets another great initiation, picking off the support. The Counterfisher, oh, just ahead. Admiral Bulldog's not going to be able to catch him. He realizes he's already extended himself a little bit too far. 
And Weeha is trying to catch up. Be able to get there, though. All right, they're going to go for this top engagement again. I don't think this pays off unless you've got everybody. Oh, oh, the vacuum! This time, though. The control for Misery, the extra bit is just enough to be able to get the kill. They'll give up the Tier 1 tower in the process, though. Oh, TP in. Puppy. He wants to make a stand here. They pop the glyph and everything. That vacuum was so huge. That's one of the biggest killers in the game for mobile heroes in general. The animation canceling of the vacuum, like you're flailing in the air. Almost better than a stun in some ways because you can't dodge it. It either hits or it doesn't. And now the Spectre has Radiance, I believe. Hey. Yeah, it's got to. 26 minutes Radiance. Not the best timing. Uh, not the worst, though, for sure. Considering the landscape of the game. You know, that 17% is going to do so much. It destroys because, Storm. Yeah, I, I Storm Spirit it doesn't go MKB. Uh, Tiny is unlikely to go in MKB as well. Thank yeah. You. S4 is going to counter it, though. He's going to go for Orchid. Destroy Spectre. Okay. Because Spec won't get the Manta soon. Yeah. The item progression takes a while. They're doing the normal build, or the normal play, though. They're sending to farm while the four of them roam With, around. Uh, well, we'll wait for this smoke. Minots is going to see them. Yeah. But the Fissure Steel. Yep, he had it from earlier. Will be able to, oh, four staff, Glimmer Cape. Maybe my nuts can actually survive in Viz. Misery's trying to run him down, Ion Shell, and Radiance turning around. Winter's Curse in the last half second will be able to control up Misery, but the Spectre himself has already turned himself around. S4 so much mana stunned used from up, and now Weha's going to be able to catch him out here. Laguna Blade takes down S4. Lotus still fighting on the side here. Jackie's able to survive. He's going to hunt down Ake. Should be able to get that quick kill, and Admiral Bulldog is just being chased by an illusion of his own. He's going to try and blink himself ahead of Weha. Hopefully he picture. escapes. Meanwhile, Lotus He's being kited around quite heavily. He's going to be slowed down. Weehaw's going to turn around, get that Light Strike Array, and Lotus dead as well. He's going to lose his Aegis. Do they have the power to take him out a second time, though? Easily. Uh, Admiral Bulldog's going to come back in. Fisher still controlling Loda. Light Strike Array, Telekinesis, and Loda is dead. Turns around trying to finish off Eternal Envy, but what a great fight. The Alliance winners... just get trounced on. Winner's Curse just wasn't used efficiently, and that fight was like... Uh, it was so weird because everybody was out of position. Nobody really knew what was going on, but they still took the fight. Which is the odd part for me. Uh, like S4 used most of his mana to try to get to the Lina for some reason, but the Lina just calmly yules him, throws him up in the air, combos him, kills him instantly, and uh, you can't really afford to lose the second highest net worth throw in the game that easily. He actually has to survive these fights. Once he has the Orchid, there's a cool trick where on the way down, for anybody that doesn't know when you're playing Storm versus Lina, instead of trying to zip away, just spam the Orchid way down onto the Lina, and she'll probably get the stun off if she's perfect, but nothing else will come of it. She can't get the ulti off, which is the killer. Yeah. Rough times, three Bloodstone charges. S4 is not going to be a happy camper as the Storm Shearn anymore. The Spectre. Rise of the Spectre. If they just given up the Winter Wyvern, Alliance would have been so much happier than they are now. Anyway, it's uh, 12 to 13 right now. What, why are we paused again? Uh, Misery's hotkeys. Oh, okay. I think he's just trying to get them sorted. Uh, 5k lead for Alliance. 4,000 experience lead for Alliance still after that fight, but... Spectre beats this late game, right? Uh, I mean, there's more pushing power potential and like that sort of surprise, like end game scenario for the Tiny Wisp. But I mean, call me biased, but I think Storm is the best six slotted here. Uh, that's true. I, I'm Storm not even saying that's really to like flame. No, 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 it's no, just no. like it's actually. I know what the hero can do. Yeah, I've I've heard a couple of pros say the exact same thing. I mean, yeah. de your your defending base potential, like buybacks, are so valuable on a Storm Spirit. So much more than any other hero. For the same reason that Aegis is so good on him. You get an instantly refreshed mana pool. Uh, and the hero just gets stronger as time goes on. That pickoff potential for him solo is huge. Yeah. I would wait. Man, that Frankfurt Stadium looks nice. Does it? It does. It does indeed. I hope I get to cast that. I hope we get to cast that together. 
you on that newbie stream backing up Purge, <laughs> me with LD on the main stage, uh, glorious. Oh wow, I thought we were gonna have a nice moment, Blitz. Why can't we have nice things, dude? Why can't we have nice things? Thought it was gonna be like, oh, I we cast it together. Yeah. We're on camera right now, Bobo. Do your job for once. I'm. S it feels like there's a rock in my gut. Just terrible. Can you do? At least that means no diarrhea. Oh wait. wait oh, okay. Oh, we're now they finally go. All right. Bad fight. Bad fight. Uh, Rubik has a uh, blink dagger, which is huge against Winter uh, Winter Wyvern and the Earthshaker. If he steals the curse. Uh. Is that the sound of bad storm spirit things? You don't want you don't want the curse to be stolen. You don't want to mess with him. Real scared now, Blitz. Jeez, what a net worth lead now. That it just diminished so heavily for Alliance. They were looking such great. I mean, 22 minutes in, almost having a, a 10,000 gold lead. This looked like just a clean 2-0 the wrong direction. Everyone was banking on secret, but Alliance had been looking great. That last team fight turned against them pretty heavily, and now they're kind of scrambling to just keep some map control at this point. Bottom lane, Storm Spirits actually could jump in. They're going to go for the relocate, but they don't realize Puppy's sitting on the side. They have the Shallow Grave, and now Eternal Heavy will just turn on and you've kill Ake with the help of Pylai Oh no, die. he's not even going to die. <laughs> they're not going to be able to get him. Loda, Kyle around. The nukes are there, even a toss-up from Pilot Eye makes sure that Lotus stays dead. And Eternal Envy, he'll actually just keep on moving forward with all his, uh, all the healers that he has, plus the urn charges. I mean, he's dying, and he's, the Tiny is still the highest net worth yeah. by, like, a decent margin. Like, you would shudder to think what would happen to the secret if Tiny just survived, like, one of these two fights. But they just haven't been able to. That's pretty rough so far. Oh, Pilot Eye almost catches in my nuts, but Glimmer Cape and will be able to stay ahead of the vacuum, so I'm sure he's fine. But this will mean a tier one tower at the bottom lane. And as these towers start dropping, you'll see Eternal Envy and uh, Weeha catch up to the Storm Spirit and Tiny and Network. Big advantage right now. They have a two tower advantage now left to one. Okay. Next, Roshan, you've got to get a lot out of it. I want to fight even with the Aegis on the Tiny, which just shows that it's the supports that matter the most right now at this phase of the game. Yeah. Like you have to be able to keep your Winter Wyvern in a good position so that she can actually... I think it's a she, right? She can actually get a good Winter's Curse off. Mm -hmm. uh, the Storm Spirit, luckily, now has the Orchid, so the initiation... And they can actually kill Puppy for once. I don't think Puppy has a Glimmer Cape, right? At the very least, you can be from just getting those clutch-ass graves off. Yeah, that five seconds just buys so much time. The rest of the team to be able to get there. Uh, especially on a hero like Spectre, where every second... Yeah. Dispersion still works with Shallow Grave, right? So, as you're dealing damage to him, but he's not actually taking anything, because he's sitting at the 2%, you're still dishing out damage that is reflected back to you, right? Yeah, they just go pew 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 right back. And it's just a continued Radiance burn too. Like, this phase of the game. Yo, yeah. It's pretty killer. You, if you're Alliance right now, you kind of have to be concerned with how these fights are going so far. I think you still scale really well. Because the storm just has an infinite scaling mechanism with the bloodstone, but uh, you can't really continue to afford to lose these fights. Hey, what do you think about? Um, have you seen Big Daddy No Tails build on Tiny? What's he go? What's he go? Butterfly. Think it's not bad. Think it's not bad. Do you think that our Tiny should go Butterfly instead of the Daedalus that he's trying to build right now? No. I think he needs damage to kill the spec. No. The smoke pops. They pop the Spectre Ultimate now. They will see Storm Spirit and get the kill on the IO. Storm Spirit does manage to get out, though. Four man smoke and the Spec Ult for a Wisp. Not terrible. Yeah, you just need flat raw damage right now, though, to deal with the Spectre. She's staying alive for way too long. 
If you can even, it, it, I know like the grave exists as a mechanism, but even if you can just get him really low off the bat, like immediately, and force him to just play defensively as the Spectre, that would be enough. Because the majority of the damage is just coming from Eternal Envy staying alive and radiancing everything in his eyes. He almost has a heart now too if he wants it. Things are going to get pretty brutal. Three-man rotation across. They're going to try and catch us four here. But zip, zip. He stays ahead of the Lena quite easily. 15 to 13, 32 minutes in. But it was once such a good gold lead for Alliance has now been marginalized to only 2,500 gold and about uh, 1,500 experience. Weird thing is they still have the lead. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we haven't talked about that enough. Fight but, after fight. But... Yeah, they've lost like three fights in a row, but they still have a decent gold lead. And they may be able to improve that net worth lead a little bit more with Roshan coming up in a minute. I don't feel like Secret... I mean, they're still getting pushed around so heavily by the split push. Like, S4 is so mobile, and he's able to keep all these lanes pushed forward pretty aggressively without too much to fear. And then the same kind of applies to um, the Tiny Wisp. Even the Shadow Blade of Admiral Bulldog allows them to do a lot. It was actually going to go on Weeha. They're going to go for some sort of relocate play, but no. No, no, no. I think they, they've just fallen into that trap one too many times. But they go for the aggressive pickoff, but there's the Dazzle or somebody behind and the immediate response. The positioning game from too good this entire game. Yeah. Like, this is where the strength of Dazzle lies, being able to get that counter-initiation off. And that's always kind of the play when you're going with a Tiny Wiz combination, is that you're always going to go for those really aggressive pickoffs. More aggressive than most other lineups would be able to achieve just because of that um, global factor. Inspector now has straight heart. Okay, very, very tanky hero. 600 HP, uh, a blink dagger now for the tiny. He After sold it. After the Daedalus, okay, never mind. I mean, Crystalis, and looks like he maybe will be finishing up the Daedalus. Why would he go for the blink dagger? Just to try and get one of those supports? Kill Just the Dazzle Poppy as soon or as the Lina. possible? Yeah. I kind of agree with it, but at the same time, most of the time you're going to get initiated on by that spec ulti. So it's going to be really hard to utilize it. Th which is why I think Bulldog decided to go for the Shadow Blade. So he could actually run away from the spec ulti. But I think that's the main reason he decided to go for this build. Yeah. So he could constantly reposition himself against the spec ulti. I think it's pretty good. You definitely wouldn't see him go this build in most games. But... The Shadow Blade works really well against that. Um, mm -hmm. There's a gem though on Puppy. Everybody from Secret is moving into the enemy jungle. Yeah, it's just walking around with misery, but Alliance... No, they're actually going to be spotted by Alliance. They're going to go for this kill. The Spectre Ultimate gets popped, and Misery, they're just trying to stop Ake from relocating out, and they do so successfully. Great control there. Loda turns around, gets much damage out from his combination, but it doesn't even... And a chance. Did they not see them walk into the jungle? I thought they had a ward there. Uh, I don't... Really? That was really odd, because I, I think for sure they saw them come in there. They weren't able to spot that in, I guess. Alright, time for Roshan here. I thought Alliance would be able to take it with the amount of pressure that they're putting on the map across all sides, but... Secret after that two-man pickoff, we're going to be able to go straight into the Roshan pit, and that'll be an Aegis now. Or the Spectre. Or enough to kill once with that heart. Actually, I mean, it's still slow going. There's not a great Roshan taking hero. They don't have Tiny, though. S4, they come forward here, Jackie. He's just trying to push back the rest of the team so they can finish off Roshan with a little bit safer distance, and we'll be able to get the Aegis now. Okay. That's pretty big. I think Secret can just actually power through now. It's pretty hard for them to be able to keep up at this point with him. Uh, Storm still has buyback in 2700 gold. Tiny buys that blink dagger and then sells it again. Seems really on the fence about this. He's so close to finishing up the Daedalus, but... 
I think he's just kind of concerned about yeah. oh, what the direction dear. is. They're going to be running in. My nuts as well as Ake are here for the defense, so Lotus should be able to get out this time around. But the spec doesn't have the ult quite yet. Maybe if they can initiate on Weeha here. Uh, but they're just not getting enough. Oh, four step forward, but uh, Misery actually turned around. Now the Spectre ultimate comes in, and Jackie is ready to go. Lotus and Lotus best. left without a Wisp. They can't get to him in time, so Lotus just going to be able to draw some distance, I guess. Hopefully be able to bring back the rest of Team Secret as far as possible. This four immediately starts pushing out the middle lane because he knows, like, a death that close to their base means that Team Secret's going to push uphill. Hey, that's pretty rough right now. Got a Manta almost completed on now two. This is pretty big. Tiny is still top of the net worth, but it's just not mattering anymore because there's so much crowd control. Like, they just aren't getting Winner's Curse off whatsoever. Pretty rough. Boots to travel now for the Lina. Against this global presence of both S4 as well as the Tiny Wiz combination, I feel like it's needed to have one of your cores operate on a Boots to travel, not just rely on the Spectre the whole entire time. He is going to see Weeha here, but S4 just doesn't have the mana to actually make this kind of jump. And Weeha had the right idea. He just saw that camp. It's gone. Storm Spirit had to been around, but Light Strike Array, the guess, wasn't on the mark. So now for another Tier 2. Team Secret still has some time to utilize that Aegis that maybe they'll go from Tier 2 straight uphill into the enemy base. All right, so Admiral Bulldog still farming out as much as he can. He's 1-0-6. He's been pretty patient this game, but uh, they eventually have to get some abilities off. Like, Secret's just been outfighting them consistently for the last, like, five fights now. And the difference in net worth and XP completely swinging the other way. Like, a 7,500 in both directions. At one point, Alliance almost had a 10k net worth lead, but this is the power of the Spectre. At some point, she does get really strong. It's not easy to be able to fight into her and... Dark's here too. Now has a Shiva's guard. Like they're all really pumped up, and I don't really know if they can kill him twice when he's got the grave and the medallion behind him. Melee Rax is going to be falling. I think Alliance just give this one up in exchange for pushing down a tier two tower. No reason to fight into the Aegis if you don't have to. And they will kind of start pushing forward. Admiral Bulldog, now that they forced a TP back, maybe they can go for the initiation in the background. They're going to go for Misery. Or could already place on him. Echo Slam gets laid up and only catches one. They will be able to combo Misery down, but they actually get the save. Witch's Curse gets laid in. Misery will still be able to get up the vacuum wall. And that's devastating for Alliance. S4 is able to jump away and TP back. Loda, in the meantime, is going to be caught. Cold Embrace manages to save him with the help of the Wisp. But they're now up in the top lane, fully committed. As, uh, never mind, they actually both had TP, so they'll get back to base. S4, jump in, but nothing he can really do. I think if you're Alliance, you actually have to go for the split push game now. There's no way that you're winning a fight head-on anymore. Like, yeah. time and time again, the Grave is just there every single time. Like, I don't think that you stack like that, because they use the Orchid Silence, the Winner's Curse, every single stun and ability that they had to kill the Darks here, but meanwhile, like, Puffy's just sitting there, Heal, grave, 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 solar crest, solar crest. Like you can't really cut through anybody without first killing puppy. The fact that he's like three, one, and eight, when there's so many different spells that can uh, cut across and get to him, is just insane. Like that just speaks to his positioning game so far this game. It's like really difficult to do it as a support, especially when you're against a storm, to be able to play uh, that close to the vest and right. always make it in time. But he's been able to accomplish it, and they don't have Echo Slam now. Secret are just trying to end this game before split push can happen, and once again, Pylai died for like the fifth time this game has stolen Fissure. Long jump back, there's just kills the creep wave, and TP right back on as Loda and Ake continue to push forward in the bottom lane. They're just hoping to be able to drive back Secret, because they still cannot fight them, as you said. they got to play for the split push game for as much as possible. If a team knows how to do a split push, it's Alliance. It's alliance. Are they really going to be good enough? You know, um, I would love to see Silver Edge finished up for Admiral Bulldog. For the dispersion? Uh, yeah, for the dispersion. It is pure damage. 
huge. Yeah, it's pretty nice. For the nasty. Desolate, too. And the, the damage reduction was nice as well, considering how much like, you take away the dispersion and then the damage reduction from there. That would actually limit Spectre's output so much. I just don't know how he's ever going to get close enough. Yeah, that's a. Uh... He can blink it. He can make some sort of. Like, the problem is, usually the Shadow Blade is used in conjunction with the Blink Dagger for you to be able to get in position and then blink. But it's um, really hard for him to just blink and then make. Silver, silver Edge play or just run in. He would have to have a BKB. Yeah. Because otherwise the Radiance and the, the ultimate from Eternal Envy just makes it impossible to blink around. I think you just get lifted. It's the biggest issue. Yeah. S4 has some survivability, but uh, Secret... They can just go for this, like, four Okay, style. bottom lane. They're going to be able to catch Eternal Levy. Enough. Nice setup from Admiral Bulldog. The TP's coming in. Jackie managed to get off the Manta, but Bulldog it only still results dies. in the kill of Bulldog. Meanwhile, S4 does get hit by Pylai Die. S4 is actually going to try and turn onto him. The Shallow Grave and Glimmer Cape will buy him time, but Puppy is now going to be the next target. S4 bounces back to finish off Pylai Die, and he has a little bit of mana left. Perhaps just enough to be able to survive. Oh, they're all oh, coming in actually going to be able to come in. He starts healing up the mana of S4. Now he's going to be able to jump forward and go for the support in the background. Puppy, this time I think, my friend, you may be dead. Never mind. Light Strike Array actually catches vacuum. Two-man wall. S4 is forced back. Winter's Curse laid on to Weha. Lota has to turn and fight against this Lina, but he's so tanky. Lota's just not outputting enough damage at this point in time. No criticals. And now a cold embrace is needed to be able to save him. Wiz comes in. Last second. Glamour Cape keeping him alive. Being able to just get enough for Lota to escape. Ake. Balls deep there with no HP, but still managed to pull out the save and now picks up a regen rune. Tether away. No, Dragon Slave catches him right before he can get out. Loda, well, he's going to be hit for the old scepter, so looks like he's still dead as well. Ake did everything he could, but oh, Misery almost died to that, but not enough. The only, the, the only factor that really saves Alliance at this point in time is that they killed Eternal Envy before that whole entire fight occurred in the top lane. That's only going to save them for another 10 seconds. They didn't even get that much gold out of it, though. He didn't have some kind of crazy kill streak or anything like that. That belongs, I believe, to Weha. Like, what a turnaround this guy's had. He started something like 0-4 in the lane almost immediately and just died yeah. repeatedly. And all of a sudden, he's some unstoppable fire juggernaut, and nobody's really able to keep up with him anymore. Uh, and this is the power of Lina when she gets like some amount of space. It's just been like consecutive team fight win after consecutive team fight win. But they're going to make a defense here. The Spectre, I believe, has his ulti. Yeah. He's chasing down Bulldog right now. He knows that Bulldog can't get away from this dagger. Yeah. And so this this completely limits uh, a TP out from Admiral Bulldog, or is trying to as much as possible. Looks like he will be able to get out. Yeah. If it stopped Admiral Bulldog from being able to TP away and then still had that uh, ultimate ready to go, he's going to pop it now. Where is he really going here? Looks like he's just going to make an entrance into the fight. They've already taken out the range. Rax Vacuum controls Admiral Bulldog a little bit. Fisher, they're going for Misery as best as possible, again. but Puppy is going to be able to come in with a shallow grave. Saving everything, and that's a second lane of Rax down. Alliance, they seem to know they need to be able to get a kill in exchange for that, but they just don't have the strength to take it. And Lota just doesn't have the attack speed. And watching him earlier trying to beat through the Lina, and you didn't get any crit to threaten them during this small period of time. So, the all-man push through top lane. This will be the game ender for Alliance unless they can somehow make a turnaround here. Admiral Bulldog searching for an opening. Trying to catch Team Secret off their guard. But it doesn't look like it's really going to happen. They have the relocate available, and if they just found initiation, quick one or two kills, maybe just to stall Team Secret a bit more. You can't just let Team Secret just get to this top lane anymore. Yeah. They will actually just lose the game. You have to create space somewhere. Top would probably be the easiest for them. You've already done some damage to the tower. Uh, and you have to go for the split. Time and time again, it's been demonstrated that Alliance can't keep up in the team fight, And it's not like it gets easier now. Two-man Fisher stun. The uh, Spectre might be able to catch Admiral Bulldog here. The dagger doesn't land, though. Won't be able to keep up, so that's just full retreat, though. Alliance, you said they had to somehow stop Team Secret from being able to get to the five-man top lane. Well, 
bottom is way too far away from actually even pressuring. What does Ludo get now? Moon shards or something? Yeah, I think oh, no. moon shard is probably the most efficient. Because he, he has to have more attack speed. He gets a single hyperstone for now, but... Uh, I guess the reasoning is that the BKB won't come in handy because of the Lina ultimate, but I still think that he's just been crowd controlled too long. Oh, a whiff! Echo Slam! Admiral Bulldog fails that one, and now the turnaround. Misery actually comes in, slows down everyone with the Shivas, does manage to get the wall off, and the vacuum back in, catches Admiral Bulldog. They get the Winter's Curse, but nothing is really had of it. Meanwhile, S4 is going to die on the left-hand side, as Weeha was able to get that control of the Laguna Blade to finish him off, and Weeha just keeps on barreling forward now with his Scotty, right-clicking down Lota. S4 is going to come back with a buyback, but Weeha, still plenty healthy, is going to turn and fight S4. Lota, meanwhile, gets the cold embrace. Jackie looking to be able to run him down, but a relocate out back to the fountain will keep him alive. The problem is Team Secret still look plenty healthy as they turn their focus down to this tier 3 tower. Loda comes back in thanks to a TP scroll, but he's immediately down to half HP and Aki has to save him once again, but it's not going to happen. S4, he goes for way hop, and immediately Yule Scepter is going to be able to take away that Orchid, and I just don't see them being able to finish him off now with a Shallow Grave even. Admiral Bulldog goes down, S4 commits everything, but can't even get that buyback out from Loda. He moves forward, trying to get the toss up. Misery combine these two together for a two-man stun. The cleave isn't enough to finish off anybody there as Misery making the juke around in the trees will be able to get out and now he has to turn and force the fight against Jackie but that's just not where he wants to be and Jackie will walk away with a double kill and force out the GG from Alliance. Just Weeha hasn't really died at all. Puppy is always there with the counter initiation from the grave. Not a whole lot that they can do at that point but what a missed opportunity for Alliance to go for the 2-0 that not a lot of people expected. Their laning phase was pretty much ideal. They get a solo first blood kill uh, in the mid lane like three times in a row. Uh, they get the kill on the dark tier.